It looks like they have Paolo in coming up next. Why don't we go with the flow? I think we're going with the flow. Okay, um, we will we'll take you after Paolo. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, the Paolo. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I. I give a perspective from a different perspective, which is seen uh, from the analysis of post-mortem tissue collected at autopsy table at the medical school of the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, uh, the rationale for doing this is because studying air pollution is a, from the toxicological point of view, is a real nightmare. You have changes in composition Composition changes with weather, time, source, meteorological conditions. And the dose also is difficult to extrapolate to, individual, to individuals. So, so we have to rely on models or satellite images or combine land user regression, everything with land-based measurements. But we don't have a proper way to control for habits and attitudes and practice within the urban environment. So uh, it's difficult to control for this spatial temporal variability in exposure. Uh, so uh, we reason, so we have a relevant filter. The human lung is a passive monitor, individual monitor that everybody, uh, at least those human living beings that I know, carry with them for the entire life. And uh, on the other hand, this work was facilitated because I think we have in Sao Paulo, by some uh, very strange uh, legal situation, uh, the, one of the largest autopsy services in the world, natural gas, 16,000 per year, uh, encompassing the entire city, uh, so we can build maps using these uh, filters. On the other hand, human lungs. Uh, I think there are spirits blocking. Chris, so try pointing there. Maybe. No. Uh, the so slide. we change the slide. So we uh, what we did. So this is the pollution in the city. This is my window. It, this is a human lung having carbon deposits. So the question, how much of this, uh, uh, this, this pollution present in the air, everybody takes home at the end of the day, or at the end of the years? So we interviewed the families, the relatives, in order to, pro to have allowance for doing this study. And we did, so it's like a retrospective cohort, starting at the death and retroceding back in time. So we have information about feeding practice, uh, occupation, residency in the last 20 years. And, uh, and we also have the maps and geocoded all those patients. And we have traffic measures and estimates of air pollution for each individual. So histologically, we have these this black spots here called anthracosis, which are originally described in co-workers' pneumoconiosis. Uh, but now we have another anthracosis, antra from the Greek word carbon, osis from deposition, uh, which is not provenient from inhalation of mineral carbon, but also by combustion. <laughs> so smokers and hair pollution induces a new anthracosis, a new pneumoconiosis. And you can see that histologically, those mark, these are the pleural surface here. This is, these are lesions pre present in the pleura of uh, air pollution. This is the, these are the lesions present uh, that we saw macroscopically. Then we are seeing them uh, microscopically 
and a smoker. So we have smokers and non-smokers. And this, these particles accumulate equally in, in small airways and around blood vessels equally. And so they have a fibrotic small airway disease. Pathologically, this is constrictive small airway disease, even in non-smokers. So we studied to now 430 prospective cases. And so these people lived for a long time in the city. So we have a, a questionnaire including smoking, occupation, and time spent in traffic and time living in Sao Paulo, obtained for the next of kind. So we, uh, we cannot, could not able to communicate uh, with the patient. Geocodification and, uh, uh, and adjustment for proximity of a major road type and intensity of traffic at residence, socioeconomical and vulnerability data based on census. And so we measure intercoses on the plural surface. So we made a model where the dependent variable is the proportion of the plural tissue occupied by carbon and as dependent variables a set of explanatory variables. So this sounds like this. We did different mode, modes. Uh, our adjusted, after adjusted for smoking. So in, we have uh, a difference in the lobe. Upper lobe have a higher deposition uh, of carbon. It is classical in pathology. But uh, daily hours spent in traffic has a significant uh, coefficient. That don't change this coefficient, if we add to the model different sets of variables, like smoking, like age, years living in Sao Paulo, you see the, the coefficient of hours spent in traffic remains constant across different model specifications. The uh, uh, smoking, of course, uh, represents a significant source is present in pack years. Age as well is a marker of long-term long exposure and socioeconomic index is quite important. So if you are poor and takes long times in traffic, you get a higher proportion, a higher dose of, the, this, this, of this pollution home at the end of the day. If we compare, uh, so uh, just come back because passive smoking uh, is, has, is important but non significant in our case. So, uh, as well as uh, street density uh, and, and, and so has some importance but not so uh, as important as daily hours in traffic. So when we have the average of our population, this represents that uh, urban dweller of the, our population uh, smokes about five cigarettes equivalent per day. Two hours in traffic represents 1.5 cigarettes in our account. Uh, this is a higher level than predicted by the studies conducted in Beijing. Beijing, they obtained the same five cigarettes, but using, uh, in a city that has 85 micrograms per cubic meter of anomine in, of PM 2.5, whereas Sao Paulo has 25 to 27. Probably because they, they, they didn't make measurements, direct measurements, they extrapolated from the effects of air pollution and transform it in cigarettes equivalent. I suspect that the coefficients relating, based, if we are true, every five micrograms of PM 2.5 represents one cigarette per day. So this, this is, and perhaps the coefficients relating chronic exposure are subestimated. I don't know whether epidemiology confirms this, 
but I, I would suspect that the equivalence of long-term exposure would be higher if I am right, if you are right. So then uh, there is the idea that uh, policies aiming to reduce the dose, not the concentration, must include uh, increased traffic fluidity in order to avoid people to stay jammed in long traffic jams, inhaling more cigarettes equivalent, where they are stuck, uh, surrounded by <coughs> exhaust pipes. And our data, ref so we have also a question of human rights, I suspect. Pregnant women, those that are family history of cancer, children, they are exposed to unavoidable, they are light smokers. And perhaps I, uh, our data may be of help uh, to epidemiologists to include time spent in traffic as a proxy variable to control for a spatial variability of those in population studies. Thank you very much.